Hello, my brothers and my sisters. Welcome. Welcome to another lovely, beautiful episode of Simplify. And I greet you as always. I greet you in the most beloved green, the green of peace, the green of the pious, the green of salam. May the peace and blessings of Almighty God be with you, guide you, and always and always show up for you. I mean, today's episode. Today's episode is a somehow a bittersweet. And I pray to Allah. May Allah not insert sorrow into our lives. May Allah not insert untimely deaths into our lives. I mean, I'm going to use two analogies this morning on my episode. Surah to Kaf. There's a very, very pertaining, a very, very important surah in calf that Allah specifically wants everybody to recite every Friday. There is a reason why he wants us to recite that surah every Friday. As a reminder of something, I'll come back to that. But let me start with this part first. There is one young man in Nigeria, he's a very, very popular musician by the name Davido. Some people call him Davido, some people call him Davido or Davido. However, his name is his name. And recently, a few weeks ago, they celebrated his son's birthday. Three-year-old boy, Modumeta. And Davido is a well-to-do man, very hardworking, very, very hardworking. So much so, he's such a hardworking man that there's a movie in the United States, Coming to America Part 2. They used his music as a soundtrack. That is very, very rare. Such a prestigious, popular movie that they use an African artist. His music has the soundtrack, but they did. Now, that is how successful this young man is. And unfortunately, and I'll tell everybody, unfortunately, because unfortunately, he traveled, him and his woman, or before they get back, or they rush back. There's been a news all over the place that their son, a three-year-old boy, went in the swimming pool in D-R-O-W-N. They couldn't revive him. They took him to the hospital. They couldn't revive the boy. He was gone. For what do matter? A three-year-old, young, beautiful baby, beautiful boy, gone just like that. Imagine their delicate family. Such a tragedy, such a, such a trauma of the heart that this family will be going through. The family is prestigious. They were to the family in Nigeria. And just like that, a young beautiful boy is gone. Now, this is my thing. This is why this is getting simplified attention. Because everything that happens in life, if it does not happen to you directly, is happening for you. So it goes either way. Is it a white or is black? Is it that Allah is trying to tell you something? Or Allah is trying to test you with something? Either way. Now, we were the outsiders looking in. And this story plastered the whole internet about the video. His son that passed. Sometimes Allah wants to see what you will do with any information. Allah wants to know if you see something at the tip of your nose, are you going to pay attention to it? And what is going to be your reaction? Positive or negative? Good or bad. And a lot of people were criticizing this man. May we not fall in front of our enemies to make jest of. May Allah not do that to us. A lot of people were making fun of this young man. A lot of people are saying, ah, Idamuta Idamulu is rich. He's rich. Uh, that's what they get. That's what he rich. He, he, he deserves or whatever. 
Now, a lot of people empathize, including myself. And I'm sure including all of you. We empathize. But this is what I want to say to everybody. Let me tell you, you do not laugh at people that are going through calamities, that are going through a testing phase of Allah. Because guess what? We are going to go through testing phase of Allah. Either we like it or not. Either we like it or not. That is why when Allah made white, he made black. As a matter of fact, Allah made black first. Because if there wasn't darkness, Allah wouldn't say, let there be light. So Allah created darkness first before he created light. And Allah says, After every difficulty, there is ease. He did not say, after every ease, there is difficulty. So be careful how you make fun of people because we're all going to have our testing face. And Allah warns us in the Quran and in the Bible, in his books. Allah warns us about making jest of people that he is testing. Because I don't want to learn you. Testing calamities is Allah's leash. Okay? Now, and Allah says, if I'm testing somebody, if someone is going through my testing face, and you laugh at them, or you criticize them, or you make more query of them. Exactly that type of test. Exactly that type of test that you're criticizing the person for. I will test you. I will surely bestow that test on you. So for people that are saying, Damolowoni is rich, blah, blah, blah. How many nannies does he have? Help them, what are they? Don't do that. There's a reason why he says thou shalt not judge. Because when you judge, you're going to blow it. You will never be right in your judge in your judgmental character or personality. Now, I don't want to buy the video. Do we want that? Inshallah, we don't. So he that he has happened to, don't make chest of him. Just pray for the family. Pray for the Adelike family. May Allah heal them. May Allah give them the fortitude to bear the loss. Because no matter how many or more, how many more children they will have, there is going to be that hole in their heart for the rest of their lives. There will be that hole, unfillable hole. I'm going to tell you two quick stories. And the second story, well, let me tell you this quick. Inshallah, may Allah give us time. There was one woman. That, that, no. I'll give you that story next time. Please remind me, okay? Let me give you this one. Let me go to Surah Tulkaf, the intro, the beginning. You remember I said there's a reason why Allah makes us recite Surah Tulkaf every single Friday. My brothers and my sisters, if you have not read Kaf, Surah Tulkaf, go and read it all. It's one of the most beautiful, the most important, where well, every chapters in the Quran are important. But it's so important that Allah wants us to read it. It's mandatory. Now, this is the thing. Surah to Kaf has a lot of mini, mini stories in it. Mini, mini stories. And there is one story that I've told before in previously simplified episode. And I'm going to tell it again because it's relating to now. You remember when Allah told them, well, let me tell you again. There was a time, at the time of uh, Rasul Musa, Prophet Musa, Ali Salatu Wasalam. And there was a question asked Moses, in the peace of Allah be upon him. There was a, a question that was asked of him. He said, ah, uh -uh. is there anyone smarter than you, more courageous than you, more intelligent than you? No matter how much Allah has given you, count your blessings. Because someone has more than you. You know what my lovely prophet said? Eranalu, Babani, no, I don't think so. Allah said, yeah, Musa. You said that? You know how they say, in all things, give thanks to God. You know what our prophet should have said? Me smart, as to the full life. Allah is the smartest. 
Father, you have your perfect will be seen at. And Allah said, Yeah, Musa, you are the smallest, but will you go and go for lecture? And Allah told him to go on this journey. And he went on that journey. I'm going to call the long story short. I'm going to extract what we need from that story for tonight's message. Anabi Musa went to get a lecture from a, a man. The man so intelligent when Allah says you're going to go on a journey and you're going to get intelligence gathering from another man. You think you're smarter. So Musa, and he knew, he knew he was intelligent. At the time, he was smartest. Allah gave him that. He was the prophet of the time. What is Allah talking about? He was so obliged and excited to go and see who is smarter than him. Allah took him on a long journey. And on that journey, Allah took him again to another side of the journey. And then he realized, oh my God, the position where we're supposed to meet the teacher, the person that I'm supposedly supposed to be learning from, is back there. My brothers and sisters, I'll be telling that story more. But I'm trying to extract something from that story for this episode. And Nabi Musa, when Ali Salatu was salam, when he met the man, the man was almost so insignificant, that's still a fool that Allah did not dignify a name for him. The only thing Allah called him was, so Allah did not dignify a name for him in the Quran. The only thing Allah called him was Qadir. Qadr. A name that was almost insignificant. That's how low Allah wanted to take Anabi Musa first before he learned his lesson. So he would go on a journey with this Qadr. They were going. But there was a time. There were three tests. Instances. Leave me a comment. If you would like me to tell the story of that journey. And the, the reason why Allah sent Musa. If you want me to tell that, leave me a comment. So Nabi Musa was walking with this man. They got to a town. And the town people, there was a young boy. Such a hooligan. He was acting the fool on the street, creating trouble, falsifying, all that. The courier, as soon as him and he and Musa walked by, they saw the boy. The courier killed the boy. Three lessons and every Musa was supposed to learn from that journey. Our beloved prophet, number one, number two, was supposed to learn more. But when he got to the third, he lost his cool. He lost his patience. So, could you say you should have been patient? And I will tell you the meaning of every encounter that we had. But I'm going to tell us one. Could you told Prophet Musa, alayhi salam, that the reason why I killed that boy is not because I'm a killer or I'm a murderer, but it's because Allah asked me to. Now you wonder why Allah would tell somebody to kill another person's son. When Allah already told us, thou shalt not kill. When you kill a man, you have killed a mankind, right? Musa, this is what you couldn't wait for, so I'll tell you the story now. I'll tell you the reason. That boy, his parents, they're close to Allah. His parents, Allah loved them so much. Now, the parents, he, that boy was the only child. And they actually begged Allah before they could make this baby. Because they, Allah could bless them with this baby. But every atrocity the boy commits, the parents will overlook him. Because he's the only child. Every time somebody reporting, your son broke our something, he broke the stereo, he, 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 he punctured our window. The parents will say, I'm sorry, but they don't correct. The, I'm not saying they don't correct. He's a spoiled boy because he's an only boy, only child. Kodir killed the boy. And now, Kodir was explaining to Musa why he killed the boy. So Kodir said, you see that boy? He is, his parents love him so much and his parents are dearly to Allah's heart. And if the boy keep going like that and the parents keep 
going the way they're going with him, they're not going to be on good side of Allah anymore. Because they're going to commit sin against Allah because of the child. So Allah says, remove that boy. But before we could remove that boy, Allah already fulfilled a different promise for the parents. Promise of a better child. Promise of an obedient child. A God-fearing child. Even though the parents will miss that boy, the promise of Allah is greater. That's what I'm going with today's episode. If you know that video, share this message with him. Tell him to have no fear. Tell him, I know it hurts. But I'm telling you this. Allah, believe in God. He will give you a better child. I'm not saying this boy that died has committed any atrocity. He was only three years old. He didn't ask to die. Allah took him. Allah took him. May the promises of Allah be fulfilled on you. The video, And I'm going to say this to every parent that has suffered the loss of a child one time or the other. Don't worry. That is the test of Allah. Allah says it is. Allah says, Fa'ina ma'alus wa yuzuru. Inna ma'alus wa yuzuru. Suratul Nasri. Alam nazwa la kazadra. Wawada na anka wizra. Alladhi anka da zara. Warafana la kazipa. Fa'ina ma'alus wa yuzuru. Inna ma'alus wa yuzuru. Fa'iza fana tafansa. Wa'ila rubbo kafarada. Worry not. Allah took your kid. He's testing you. He's only testing you. He's testing your faith. Allah says it in the Quran. Allah says, I will test you with everything that I've bestowed on you. I will test you with your kids. I will test you with your money, your business, your wife, your family, your health, hunger. Allah says, I will test you with everything. But Allah says, a true believer of Allah will say, when calamity strikes, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. To Allah we have come, to Allah we shall belong. To Allah we belong, to Allah we shall return. To parents that has lost a kid one time or the other, recently, long time ago, or whenever, remember the promises of Allah. He will never let you down. Allah always give us something better. Only we look for the replacement in form of the same thing he took away so we don't pay attention when he has repaid us Adeleke, i pray to allah to give con consolation to give solace to give peace to your family your heart the video don't let anybody tell you that you deserve it no one deserves that but it has happened to the best of our prophets Rasulullah our own prophet, the most beloved human being in the sight of Allah. On the day that is one of the most important days in the sight of Allah. The best gift, that is one of the most best gifts in the sight of Allah. Allah put all of them up in the same day, the gift of his only surviving son. On the day of Eid, our beloved prophet Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu wa sallam. His son died. So if it happens to you, I'm sorry. He has happened to the prophets. And this will not be the last time this thing will happen. May calamity not befall us. My brothers and my sisters, if you see anyone going through the trials and tribulations of Allah, don't detest the face of Allah. Don't make fun of Making fun of people that are going through the testing phase of Allah is extremely dangerous. And by the grace of God, we'll do an episode about that next week, inshallah. I promise you, don't laugh. Just because he's rich doesn't mean he deserves his son to die. And just because his dad is rich doesn't mean for the boy to die. Who are we? What kind of life are we living? What kind of world is this? When we're making mockery of such a tribulation, such a trial of another human being. 
please don't do it. Please don't do it. If anything, my beloved sympathizers, when you hear this message, please pray, please pray for their video. Please pray, pray for his family. Pray for them. Because my job is not cooperating. I'm so sorry, everybody. Please forgive me. And our team was on Camilara. I'm so into this message because I'm feeling bad. All of you come on down, go away. May I not test him, test any one of us, any one of us sympathizers with the death of a child. May I not give us any test that will be too hard for us to bear. The hardest test to bear is the loss of a human being, either loss of a spouse, but the worst loss is the loss of a kid. Allah please as Allah please as wajam. Allah please subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't test us with the death of our child, our children. Please don't test us. Allah please don't test us. Allah please don't test us. Please don't test us. Please don't test us. We can't bear that. It's too heavy. It's too heavy. My brothers and my sisters, I'm gonna stop it right here. Please, if you have not, don't forget to subscribe and turn on the the notification button so that once messages come out you have the ease and the privilege to watch it with me and we can premiere together or there'll be a reminder for you if you have subscribed and you turn on your notification there'll be a reminder for you it's time to watch simplify i love everything i say that is good or awesome tonight this morning, all glory and adoration be unto you, the King of all kings, Allah. The Lord of all lands, the Immaculate Everlasting. And everything I said that is wrong, Allah, please forgive me. I'm just a perfect imperfection. I'm never, I'm never ever perfect. And I never claim to be perfect. My brothers and my sisters, I'm so sorry, I got emotional. Even though I don't know the video, I feel it. I feel it. I really feel it. My brothers and my sisters, I love you. But no matter how much I love you, God loves you more. And I know that you love me. But no matter how much you love me, Allah loves you more. Until next time, please share this message. Please like it. Please leave a comment. Share it. Let it go viral. Let other people also know not to make more of of the death or loss of another person's child. Until next time, I love you. Keep it simple. I say, Salaam Alaikum. Don't forget, I love you. Love one another. Please don't forget. Love one another. We never know when our time will be. Love one another. Salam alaikum. Salam. Hello, my brothers and my sisters. Welcome. Welcome to another lovely, beautiful episode of Simplify. And I greet you as always. I greet you in the most beloved green, the green of peace, the green of the pious, the green of salam. May the peace and blessings of Almighty God be with you, guide you, and always and always show up for you. I mean, today's episode. Today's episode is a somehow a bittersweet. And I pray to Allah, may Allah not insert sorrow into our lives. May Allah not insert untimely deaths into our lives. I mean. I'm going to use two analogies this morning on my episode. Surah to Kaf. There's a very, very pertaining, a very, very important Surah in Kaf that Allah specifically wants everybody to recite every Friday. There's a reason why He wants us to recite that Surah every Friday. As a reminder of something I'll come back to that but let me start with this part first there is one young man in Nigeria he's a very very popular musician by the name Davido some people call him Davido some people call him Davido or Davido however his name is his name and recently a few weeks ago they celebrated his son's birthday, three year old boy, Modumeta. And 
Davido is a well-to-do man, very hardworking, very, very hardworking. So much so, he's such a hardworking man that there's a movie in the United States, Coming to America Part 2. They used his music as a soundtrack. That is very, very rare. Such a prestigious, popular movie that they use an African artist. His music has the soundtrack, but they did. Now, that is how successful this young man is. And unfortunately, and I'll tell everybody, unfortunately, Christianity in Kao, Michel Esio. Unfortunately, he traveled, him and his woman, or before they get back, or they rush back. There's been a news all over the place that the son, a three-year-old boy, went in the swimming pool in D-R-O-W-N. They couldn't revive him. They took him to the hospital. They couldn't revive the boy. He was gone. But what do matter? A three-year-old, young, beautiful baby, beautiful boy, gone just like that. Imagine their delicate family. Such a tragedy, such a, such a trauma of the heart that this family will be going through. The family is prestigious. They're well-to-do family in Nigeria.